Hello everyone and welcome to Wally Mods. This is my second major episode in my Factorio modding tutorial series. In this episode we're going to make our mod actually do some stuff by implementing custom commands. In order to register custom commands for the in-game console, we need to access the Lua command processor. As we can see here on the Factorio API main Lua page. If we go to the Lua command processor page, we can find that it holds a couple functions and dictionaries for us to access. If we look at the top, we can see it has an add command function that takes in three parameters, a name, a help, and a function. If we scroll down to see more details about this function, and then we look over at the parameters section, we can see it takes in a name, which is a string, which is the name of the command. We can also see it takes in a help localized string, a localized help message, and then it takes in a function, the function that will be called when this command is invoked or whenever you type your command in game. If you don't know what a localized string is, we can go over here, click on it, and it says it's a way to support translation of in game text. Now we'll be going over locale files a little bit later, but if you would like to get a jump start on it, you can read through this page and figure it out yourself. Going back a little bit to last episode, if you remember, we have to add a control.lua file to have real-time accessibility to our game so that we can add functions which can be accessed when the game is actually running. So I've gone ahead and created a small control.lua file which will basically add a command to our game which prints out a message to us whenever it is invoked. As you can see right here, I've accessed the lua command processor by using the global name commands, and then I use the function that we found in here to add my command named say hello. And my help message is just a plain old help message, doesn't really help that much, but you guys know what this function will do. And then I've had it linked to a function that I made up here. If we look back in the documentation on the left, we can see the function registered to the command is passed a table when the command is invoked. Now in Lua, a table is basically anything wrapped in these curly braces that have tags that you can access. And the add command function passes a table to our function that we created, the foo function in this case. This Lua table contains three, possibly four things that we can access. It has a name, which is a string, the name of command, the tick, so the game tick at which this command was invoked, or basically the time and a player index which is the player who used this command. It can also pass in a parameter string, which is if I were to invoke a command that says command, and then I have a space and I pass in a parameter, like it could be a player name. This player name, whatever I type here, will go into the string parameter. Now that we know what the table in contains, I'm gonna show you how I use this to send out a message to the player. First I'm going to set a local variable called player. I'm going to get the player from the game with the table in dot player index. Now the way that I found this function get player is I went to the main Factorio's API website and I found the Lua game script which is the main object through which most of the API is accessed. I thought it might be in here so I clicked on this link and I was scrolling down and eventually I found a function called get player. It gets the given player or returns nil if no player is found. This is what I wanted to do is I wanted to get the player Lua player object. So I clicked on the command and saw what parameters it took in. It can take in either the player index or name. Well from this table in I have the player index. So I pass that into this function and it will return my Lua player object. Once I had this Lua player object, I knew that I wanted it to print out to the screen. So I went back to the documentation, looked at the Lua player object, and was looking for a way to print text in the chat console. Immediately, my eyes were drawn to this print function, which then you can look at the parameters it takes in. It also takes a localized string and a color. Once I knew this, I proceeded to do with my new local player object. I used the function print. Hello there, this is a private message to, and then I took the player.name. 
In Lua, these two dots mean a string concatenator, which basically merge two strings together. It's good to note that this player.print only sends the message out to one player and not all of the players in the game. But if I wanted to send a global message to all players, I could then use the game.print function, which I found in the game script, the Lua game script, and then I can add my message there. This is all you need to do to add custom commands to your factorial game. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file. I'm going to move it from my... I'm going to move my main folder from my local into the mods folder in my app data roaming from last episode. And I will load up Factorio and I'll see you in a game. Now that we're in Factorio, we can see that our mod is right here, has our description from last episode. I'm gonna go into a game. Now that I have a new game loaded, I'm gonna test our new command, which is called say hello. So if I hit the back tick key or the grov key, I can then access our command through a forward slash and then the command name, which is say underscore hello. Once I hit enter, you can see, hey there, there is, this is a private message to coding animal, which is my name in Factorio. And then this is a global message to all players. So now that we see our command call works, we can tweak our command to do whatever we would like it to do in the Factorio game. Now I'll show you a, a way that you can add custom colors to your print function. If we go back here to the Lua player, then in the print we can say it takes in an optional color. Now if I don't know how this color is set up, I'll go into the documentation. And you can see it takes a red, green, blue, and alpha values, all in range of 0 to 1 or in range of 0 to 255 if any value is greater than 1. Now what this means is that we're going to have a Lua table, as we can see down here, where we set each value r equals 1, g, which is the red channel value, the green channel value, the blue channel value, and then the alpha value. So how much red, how much green, how much blue, and how much alpha we would like. Zero is no red, and one is completely red. However, if you are used to using numbers 0 to 255, you can also override this by making any one of these numbers greater than 1. Coming back here into control.lua, I'm going to define a quick color, and it's going to be called a local variable called color, and it's going to be a table where I want the color to be all red and no green, no blue. So I'm going to have r equals 1, g equals 0, b equals 0, and then alpha equals 1. Alpha is the opacity of how strong you want the color to be. Once we have this color, if we remember correctly, we can pass it into our print function. So right here in my print function, I'm going to add a comma and then pass in the color. Once we have this saved, I'm going to then reload it into my mods app data folder. And if I were to start up Factorio, you would see that it would print out in red and not in white. Custom commands in Factorio are a great way to add a little bit of functionality to your mod. However, if you want things to go semi-automatically, you're going to have to use a thing called events. And in the next episode, I will be showing you how to set up these events to trigger and do things without you having to manually call them. In this episode, I simply showed you how to print something to the screen, either to a certain player or to all players. But if you'd like to see what else you can do, I highly recommend reading more into the documentation, scrolling through, seeing what functions there are, what you can call, that sort of thing. As always, my code is in the, my GitHub repository, which is linked down below. If you're enjoying the series so far, consider subscribing. And if you want more regular updates, you can follow my Twitter account at ModsWally. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.